my favorite verse concerning the attacks of people who are prophetic and want to come and bust out your windows within the body of Jesus is simply Nehemiah, whenever his opposition came against him and said, hey, we need you to come down from building that wall and come down here and have a talk with us. And they actually want to kill him. And he said, why should I come down seeing I am doing a good thing? Wow. Come on, man. That's and incredible. That's what I said. Why should I, come, why should I come down and play in that sandbox? You guys have time to do that. And by the way, Jesus knows you by your works. That's what he tells the church. And that's exactly what we're going to get off into before we get off into that here today, because we're talking about this thing with the Laodicean church where they tolerated they, they, they came up with this thing and just went, we refuse to be agitated by the things that we ought to be agitated against. We refuse to be passionate about the things we ought to be passionate against. And Jesus literally said, you make me want to throw up. Yeah. It's not very nice. This is not nice, Jesus. This is majestic, Jesus. And, and this yep. is not a lamb-like move of God. It is a lion-like move of God. Before, before I get off into any of that, Darren, do you have anything else, man, you want to say on any of that? Yeah, I just want to say on the whole attack thing. I think uh, believers, we, we better get used to being attacked. Yep. I mean, we worship a man that was crucified. That's all I wanted to say. Wow. Yeah, uh, mic drop. Okay, right on. Exactly. Let's get into the word here because uh, there's nowhere else to go beyond that. So <laughs> right here. <laughs> I'm going to read off of verse 14 in Revelation 3, and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot, but I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Let's stop there. That's a powerful, mm. powerful series of statements right there. Right there, he says he's the beginning of the creation of God, which reminds me of John 1. You know, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Genesis 1 is the not, not the creation story, it's the recreation story. It's the story that is re-illustrating John 1, which is in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. He, Jesus is the beginning of the creation of God. He's not the created Son. It's that he was in the in the beginning in the Father, and the Father said, uh, "Light in me be," and light came out of him, and was the Son. And the Son, not the S U uh, N, but the S O N, was the light that lights of the whole world. And as Scripture says, enlightens every man coming into the world. And so he he goes on, and he's the faithful and true witness. But the works. He says, I know your works. You're neither hot nor cold. That's a, that's a crazy statement. What do you guys say? What, what, what's your take on that? Oh, I got some cool stuff, but I bet you, I bet you, you do, Darren. Well, you want to start off with that? Yeah. I was just thinking about how he's talking about um, when, when I've looked at this or even probably taught it in the past, I've always taught it in, in terms of our level of passion. So if you're not, if, if you're cold in your passion towards the Lord, or if you're, if you're, you know, and I think that maybe when we read this, we tend to think of it in terms of how much passion we have in, in, in church services, right? And so for those of us who are, you know, in, in church meetings, we're like, God, you got to come, right? We're just like swaying and just like, ah, oh, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's all awesome. But a lot of us, we, 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 we think in terms of our level of passion in, in church services. And what the Lord is saying here is, I know, uh, I, I know your record of toils. I, I know your record of, of this is regarding it like your sweat and your blood during the week, not just in, at church meetings. And that that that's very the, the, the fear of the Lord is on that, that the Lord knows our record of toil or lack thereof. And what that says to me is that what we are applying ourselves, the way we are applying ourselves during the week, not on Sunday, but Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The, the Lord is paying attention to our level of, of passion and integration of our understanding of the kingdom into our daily record and, and, and duty. And that what he's saying, what I what I hear is that um, is that there's not there is not a deliberate, intentional integration of the kingdom in your daily duty. There's no passion in your toil. It's 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 work without worship. And, and and it and it's bland, it's saltless, and, and the Lord is like, 
<laughs> like yuck i don't want it so for me it's like this is like a, a wake-up call you know for me for the church it's like we have to we have to take the father's business seriously and it's not just the songs that we sing uh that is our worship it is our daily toil it is the things that we're willing to bleed for and cry for and weep for the things that we're willing to fill for and i worry uh that within the church that there's been a separation of of worship from our work, from our, from our toil. Mm, wow. That's good stuff. That's real good stuff. I really like Jamie, how he says, how he starts off by, I, I I'm always interested whenever Jesus is dealing with the seven churches, how he introduces himself to the church. Yeah. Okay. So, so when you're dealing with the majesty of Jesus, the relational aspect of dealing with the majesty of Jesus. And remember, remember the book of revelation is, is if you look at it through the, through the lens of majesty is this he's you, you, you get to find out very quickly who he is to you, who you are to him and how you're supposed to operate within his kingdom. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so he always starts off with, this is who I am to you. Now mm. I'm going to tell you who you are to me. Mm. And now I'm going to tell you how you're operating within my kingdom whether mm. it's good or it's bad if it's good it comes a judgment comes in the form of reward if it's i should say if it's redeemed judgment comes in the form of reward if it's not redeemed the judgment comes in the form of punishment mm. so wow. the whenever whenever the majesty of jesus shows up and he brings his redemption he either does that whenever whenever he brings it he's either going to bring reward or punishment with him and he says this he says he says i am the amen okay that's the ending part i am the one who establishes everything and then he says and i am the faithful meaning i'm the one that pulled it off wow. so he starts off going okay i'm the finisher and I'm the one who made it happen. And then he said, and I'm the true witness. So I can actually tell you what's real. And then he says, I'm the beginning of the creation of God. And I'm the alpha male. Oh, man. You want to know who the big dog is? It's me. And you need to know that, Mr. and Miss Laodicean. Okay. I'm the guy that pulls it. I'm the guy that made it. I'm the guy who, who finishes out. I'm the guy that actually makes it happen. I'm the guy that tells you what's real. And I'm the alpha male. That's how he introduces himself. Come on through the church of Laodicea. And that is like, okay, I think we need to pay attention to what King Jesus is saying here wow. because it's, it's, he's like, okay, this is who I am and this is what I'm doing. So it's wow. like, it's a big deal. Then he says this, he says the same thing that he always says again, how does he judge the church by their works? And mm. I know that people here in the Bible news, I mean, the Bible belt are not going to uh, deal with that because they have a lazy theology and they want to constantly tell you why their city is going to hell, why their why everything, why their families are going to hell, why everything around them is going to hell. And it's because it's not their fault. It's because of their doctrine of sovereignty and God's in control of everything. And we're not going to be held responsible for doing anything. Well, that that flies with your religious bless me clubs, but it doesn't fly with the majesty of Jesus. He goes, wow. no. I'm the alpha male and I'm going to tell you what's real. And I'm the guy that actually does stuff. And now I'm going to deal with you according to your works. And so that's, that's real. And that's the Bible and that's new Testament and it's Jesus. That's what that is. Wow. Yeah. So it's incredible. So, so what do you got on that? Because I got, then I got to tell you guys about the history of Laodicea and how that yeah. headline. No, I, I, I'm just picturing, you know, it's that in business speak, it's send in the closer. You know, oh, <laughs> when, when uh, you know heaven's <laughs> heaven's watching all these prophets do their thing all throughout the Old Testament and and you know setting it up, and then the Father goes send in the closer, and then Jesus comes and yeah. he wraps this whole thing up, and he's like, boom, he's on the cross. He says it is finished, but wow. when he said it is finished, he didn't mean it is over. It's just the beginning of a new era, <laughs> and so you know when we hear that word, it is finished, a lot of uh, doctrine today is coming and saying, there's nothing therefore that you can do. But Jesus didn't mean it is over. He meant it. the work of God in the sacrifice of the Son is complete. And so that is complete. There therefore needs, needs to be no longer any sacrifice uh, of, of blood of the bulls and goats, but now we have Jesus who is our eternal sacrifice. And so then the resurrection gives us the hope and the guarantee of the things to come. And so we have to understand that just because Jesus died and did it all for us on the cross, that's pertaining to sin. 
Our life in Christ is no longer about sin management. That's what has been dealt with on the cross. And so if your life is no longer about sin management, what are you what are you called to lead? What are you called to steward? You're called to steward and lead the gifts and the talents that God has given you and the relationships that God has given you, like Jesus said in John 17. All those you have given me, I have not lost any of them. 